I'm back again at the boat. I'm just walking around looking at stuff, digging in all the little holes and just checking it out. And for sure this is a project which is beyond me. And that excites me a little bit. And I'm also getting similar vibes to our last catamaran, Minky, because we bought that in a state where there were so many good things on it, where the previous owner had put so much into it, but had not managed to finish it. So these masts are all new. A considerable amount of money was spent on those. The sails as well are brand new, which is just like Minky. So I'm getting vibes of that. And Minky really turned out to be a success. But like I said, this project is beyond me. So the reason why that appeals to me is that I'd like to do this with other people. I'd like other people to join me. I'd like to make friends, you know, have those connections with people. And if I can assemble a crack team of people or, you know, just one or two committed people. I still haven't put in my offer and it's not even a fact that my offer will be accepted because there are a few people right into Maurice. Just stepping on the boat today and just walking around. I don't know, it just it feels good. Something feels good in me. You know, I was talking to Chepe, the guy who who's basically who owns this little plot of land and he seems really helpful and really nice and I wouldn't live on the boat straight away. There's still so much work to do. I need to get into that at the moment, like with electrics and staying on this boat now with, you know, no fans, no no electricity, no cooking space hooked up or anything. There's actually a little house over there which is available for $200 a month, which is really cheap. Um, but that'll just give me a bit of space to get the first month or two of work done. So I am thinking ahead, as you can see. Yeah, everything seems really solid. Like the beams have been in some places have been done quite crudely. You can see like the epoxy and you know, there's some like cracking in, in the fiberglass. It just feels so strong anyway, even without the fiberglass. And I, I know like I'm gonna get ripped into for that, but it just feels strong. <laughs> Gut feeling, I don't know if it's uh, true or not, but yeah. Inside these boxes, which go here, you have your outboard engines. I'm gonna check out the engines later. These cannot be lifted by, I don't think these could be lifted and put in place by two people. It's gonna take like four or five people. So that is a mammoth task. And there's two of them, which need to go in. And there's a lot of other like heavy lifting stuff. Like if I was to take the beams out to inspect them, you're talking four or five people. So this is the port hull. I would probably make this bit into like the kitchen. And I, I feel like this would be my bedroom, even though it's like a single. So yeah, what I'm finding is there's lots of little bits like hidden. There's battery chargers and stuff there. And there's no like mold, which is what Hanukkah said to look out for. I mean, obviously they would have cleaned it before, but from what I can feel, the holes are in a good condition. It's mostly just the beams. So all this like bulkhead, all these like kind of bulkheads are all really good. And like everything down below, there is like a little bit of salt water there. So we think it could have been a big wave which has splashed through this escape hatch and has gone down there. It would make sense because that's on the side there, um, but it's just a bit wet. In Minky, we had uh, water coming in actually from the keel bolts, like when we first put the boat in the water. And also like water would just gravitate down there. So from what Maurice said, actually, the water in there has actually gone down. So it seems to me like in that case, if it's not gradually going up and it's going down, it was just a one time thing, if that makes any sense. If I look at these places and I stick my fingernail in, it really doesn't go, it really does not go in at all. Like that's, that's pretty dry. Um, like it feels like it's been made with really good wood. This boat was actually built in Belgium and it was finished in 2005. And uh, Hanukkah said it was beautifully built at the time. So it's kind of let itself go a bit, <laughs> as you can see. So for sure, my first few weeks here are gonna be if I buy the boat, I'm talking like I've already got it. It's just gonna be organizing all this stuff. Like there's lots of pipes and wiring. And I have a feeling that most of the stuff is here. This is like an office space, which is perfect for me. I can do my video editing there and it can be my little studio or whatever. And also I'm gonna take this back with me if I buy the boat, and if I can. Tiki 46, number 25. That is the plans. The building plans so I can study that while I'm in England. That's the beans.
but yeah, organizing all this stuff. Like, and another thing, like how do I throw this stuff away, you know? This is Chepe's place basically and I'm not sure how the rubbish situation works. How do you how do you throw stuff away? Because you know in a boatyard it's easy, you've got big skips and you just throw everything away. Um but just looking at these folders here, looks like there's a bit of information in there. You got stuff about the motors, electricity, electronics, house equipment. So I'll take a little look through that. Also in this hole you've got bilge pump which goes down. I like that. Also there's only two through holes going below the water line. There's one for an old diesel generator that, that was installed which has been I guess sold off maybe to recoup some of the money. Another one for the water maker. So yeah, so this is the port hull. Gonna go have a better look at the starboard hull now. Here we go. <laughs> So yeah, inside the starboard hull, yeah, just loads of stuff everywhere, disorganized. Obviously, it was a project. Well, this this is what I was worried about getting stuff like this, like stainless bolts, but they're all like pretty new. These are for like attaching the engine boxes and all that stuff, and uh, of course, enlightened bodies. I think after <laughs> a few weeks refitting this boat. I'm probably going to need that, um, but yeah, there's just loads of stuff. This, I'm not sure like the quality of it, it's like epoxy, epoxy filler, all that stuff, bits and bobs, compass, emergency grab bag, mask and snorkel, so I think I'm going to take a dip in like half an hour just to see what it's like underwater, see if there's any red flags. Here is some more salty water in the exact same place as the other hull. So I'm going to clean that up and I'll check it in a day or two and see if anything comes back. But again, I think it's coming from a big wave. There's a chance that, you know, a big boat's come past and it's really pushed water down and it's come down here. Water always finds its way down. I'm hoping that's what it is. I was a bit worried because I'd seen videos of this boat that Maurice had sent me and I was like, what's this discoloration? Is it is it damp? But it's not, it's really solid. It's just where the varnish or the epoxy is just come off uh, from like a lot of use obviously this is a bit of a tool station as well but yeah there's just loads of bits and bobs dinghy repair kits all sorts of stuff the wiring so nothing's wired up if you look at here this is like the master bedroom so this might be my oh, this could be my hull <laughs> um none of the wiring's done it's all been disconnected Oh, there you go, it's all disconnected, yeah, all this feels good, and safety horn, just in case, and then polymers and specialities, what's this, but yeah, there's just loads of this stuff around, it's just like Minky, we have all this stuff, that's empty, um, and yeah, like a bit of discoloration on the wood here. Fingernail, with a good press, just cannot penetrate it. And all this is actually like insulated, so yeah, obviously you can't see the wood behind that. Could be a worry, could be fine, we don't know. Again, bilge pumps in each hole, feels so safe. These frames are pretty nasty, pretty nasty. But there you go. And um, yeah, so, a lot, a lot of sorting, organizing, you know, just... I can't even open that, but more stuff, sandpaper, all that good stuff, and uh, going through to this, I quite like this little bedroom, but uh, is it on suite as well? sink oh yeah all feels good and then the water maker so this is a spectra water maker 
Apparently the, um, whatchamacallit needs replacing, they're quite expensive, but I'll do my research on this, because this is all quite daunting, <laughs> all this stuff. But I always wanted, always wanted a water maker, and yeah, you have this little room here. Yeah, I think it's going to be good for housing people, it just needs organising first, and um, it's just started raining. I said with the last boat, Minky, like, it's an education, so I'm not purchasing a boat here, I'm purchasing an education. This is the next step up from Minky, and it's the dream shape, it's the dream boat, Tiki 46. But yeah, it's raining, so I'm going to have to close up the uh, hatches. I have to say, it's really nice, this rain. Whew. I should get a brush and start, start cleaning. There we go. We'll get to these little bits later. They're like two different little tool stations slash workshops. The master bedroom. And then... It's beautiful. <laughs> oh. Now to sit inside on this boat while it's raining because that's my favourite thing. I love boats when it's raining. These are the front two compartments. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> so you've got the, uh, there's a pump, so I could potentially pump up the dinghy. I think the dinghy might, might have a hole in it. Um, so yeah, loads of cables. Flipping. Engine shut off switches. Some foam, some impellers I think in there. So that's like the very front. This is the port side. You've got bits. Okay, so you've got loads of. Okay, excellent. Half a fishing rod. Again. Oops. Nicely rigged up bilge pump. Ready to go. In case. And like this is brand new, like, well, a year old. And, um,. The top side of these, well, basically, these were imported at a cost of thousands, like tens and tens of thousands, apparently 60,000, but I can't imagine it being that expensive, but there you go, so it's super special. There's a bit of a story with this particular boat and masts, including snapping. <laughs> so, yeah, you can see here, like, I feel like all the important fillets and everything is really good. It's all like really well glassed and looks good. More filters. Uh, Yamaha bits, what are they? Impellers. Screws, bolts. So this, well, I'll take a look at these. It's difficult to film and do it. And yeah, more bits and bobs. And uh, a harness there. So, exactly. I mean, our friend Chris gave us this stuff. But yeah, a harness and stuff, and climbing masts. What's that? It's the anchor, anchor sign or something. Or is it towing? I'm not sure. Yes. And they all go above the water line, of course. So, really nice. So, that's that one. And moving across to the front one, stepping over this wood, which is for the back deck. Go here, and fall off. And down here. So, it really smells of polyester resin in here, so. 
you've got bits and bobs, some stainless chain there. Yeah, this is all like the fiberglass and stuff, rollers, masks, all that stuff. Most of the stuff's here. It's, uh, so it's like a cork insulation. And yeah, again, the wood all looks really good. No signs of mold or anything. More tools. And yeah, and also cables. Cables for the engine. Engines, two cables. And uh, I'm not sure what this is. But some new stuff. And again, no water, no nothing. Really solidly glassed in mast steps. And yeah, all looks good. All the running rigging and all this. Like I've no idea how to use junk sails. But uh, yeah, all the running rigging. I mean this stuff's in a bag. I think that should be okay. And uh, yeah, these masts, brand new. <laughs> Drunk rig catamaran, oh my god. Very special. So yeah, there you go. That's like most of the boat, uh, kind of superficial glance. Heck of a lot of work. I'm gonna go check out these engines um, a little bit later on. Sweating. It's uh, a week before Christmas and I'm sweating in the tropics. Losing my mind, you know. Uh, with these things, like you have to follow your gut instinct. And like, when I listen to my heart, it sounds really corny. When I listen to my heart, there's feelings of like anxiety and um, like, what the hell are you doing, Mark? <laughs> what are you thinking? But there's also like so much potential here. And like I said, it, I think it's a project to get this boat, you know, like clean, just. Just like what we did with Minky, just like get her to a sailing condition, get her to a boatyard and just do a total refit and just learn so much along the way. And I know it's going to be tough and there's going to be times where I want to give up. And in those cases, I can always just, you know, take a week off, take two weeks off and just like recharge, and not get too like into it and just take one little thing at a time. Obviously, there's like financial risk. There's a uh, you know, risk of things going wrong, not being able to get stuff. And there's a lot of risk, but you know, if I really, I don't know, sometimes you just need to push yourself over the edge with stuff. Like I felt that when I was buying the tickets for this, for here. And even at that point, I was like, I'm probably not gonna buy this boat. Like, but if I see it, if I see it, you know, or you know, it's a nice trip as well and like a nice holiday. And that's how I felt like a day or two after buying the flights. I didn't want to move out to Costa Rica or like this crazy tropical place to like start a project straight away. And I wanted to spend more time with my family in the UK. So I literally wrote down in my notebook, can I feel confident leaving the boat for a month or two? Are the hulls sound? Is the wood okay? I do feel reasonably comfortable. I'm not going to be 100% comfortable leaving the boat here by itself. Um, but it's just a month, a month and a half. Like there's a lot of things that I need to get if I you know this is all it in case my offer is accepted it's you know can I get batteries can I get the water maker sorted can I get all the electric sorted can I afford that stuff at the moment I can't but if I have like a month and if I really try really hard and you know maybe speak to some companies who would you know exchange some batteries or electronic stuff in return for you know just to to test the stuff and show it to you guys that could work things like epoxy so i'm gonna go see the engines just check they're still there because that's a big part of it you know if i had to buy two engines it's, there's just no chance really and actually originally this boat was electric and it had like 16 batteries 16 lithium batteries the solar panels in the in the shed over there and a few bits and bobs I need to work out that and how all that's going to go together yeah it's a big one it's a really big one but <laughs> It's tempting, it's like, it's, it's gonna be a life experience. Like if it fails, then, and if I fail, then I'll have learned so much anyway. You know, if this fails, then I'll have lost all my money and, and everything. But the lesson may be more valuable than the money that I lost. And you know, if it works out to be a success, then it'll definitely be worth the money that I've spent. Yeah, so I'm gonna go check out the engines now, see what they're like. Should be a nice little ride. Costa Rica.
So we're in this little Golfito Bay and this is the entrance out into the Pacific. There's actually a yacht going out there. So there is a bit of a sailing community around here. It's not completely remote. And then this place that we're going to is called Cacao and it's only accessible by a boat. And uh, Maurice put the engines here because it was the safest place for them. You do have to be careful, I think, with your belongings and stuff. And leaving outboards out is not so safe, so... Yeah. Here we have two... Yamaha... 25. So, here you go. Amazing, 25 horsepower, and uh, even if there's a problem with these, it's probably easy to fix. But it's nice to see. So this video, I'll look back at if I can buy the boat. I'll look back and see how you I can open. connect. You want oh yes, it? please. Yeah. Nice. Have some some these. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, better than I expected. Yeah. This buggy wants to come. You wanna come? So. I put a post on the on my YouTube community page uh, so if I can't upload a video or if I don't have any footage or anything I'll usually just put an update on the community if you go to my channel you'll see it so I put a picture of me looking at Mariposa yeah so I put this picture up of me looking at the boat and a lot of the comments are like don't buy that boat that is, that is not a good boat um, but you know, you can't tell it from a picture and I know for a fact people that are watching this video or have seen this, you know, the previous videos, they will not like this video, it's, they think it's going to be a wreck but I feel like I understand these boats a little bit more. I also know that it's beyond my capabilities and I'm factoring that in and it's going to be a mammoth task but yeah, someone said that catamaran looks a hunk of junk. I hope it's not that one, someone said with two replies saying, uh, agree, agree. <laughs> Yeah, and just a lot of people are like, don't buy something special because it's cheap. Um, I've put my offer in. I, I, I've put my offer in, which is, I think it's a really quite a low offer for this boat and the potential that this boat is. Um, and unfortunately for me, yet fortunately for probably a lot of people watching, uh, it's he's got more people interested just over the last couple of days, so I'm waiting on on his answer. So, sorry to be ambiguous with the figures and everything, but um, I'll let you know. Once I get the boat, if I get the boat, I'll let you know, uh, like, the prices and everything, and the money and all that stuff. Just waiting now in the hotel. I think I'll have a beer and go to sleep. <laughs> I've been waking up at, like, 7 o'clock in the morning and, like, getting up and feeling fresh, and I've not been like that for ages. I'm only ever like that when I'm on a boat. I don't know what it is about boats, but when I'm not on one or when I don't have one and I don't have that project and that goal, it's, I find it difficult to get into a normal rhythm. Cool, all right, so I'm hoping he's gonna come back over the next two days and say, offer accepted. If not, you know, I'd be happy as well, because, you know, little Yoshi, um, you know, I could spend, you know, a couple of more months looking at boats and... But, I mean, as you'll know with the other boats that I've filmed, you know, going boat hunting and stuff, maybe you could tell that I wasn't 100% with those boats. And with this one, I'm pretty much 100% that I want it for this price. I can't go any higher, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. I'm back and uh, you'll have to wait until next Friday to hear what happened. Uh, if you can't wait, I have posted a video on my coffee page and my new <laughs> Patreon page. The reason why I've put it on there and, and not public is because the video is like border, like bordering on like pity me and I hate that sort of <clears throat> content. And it might not be the result or the 
uh, or the outcome of with this boat that you will have expected. Um, but yeah, I'll fill everyone in next Friday, so don't worry about that. But if you can't wait, for all the people that have given me coffee in the past, or if you wanted to sign up to my new Patreon, uh, you can see the video there. But I won't be posting that publicly because it's just like, it's, <laughs> I don't know, it's just me being emotional and, and everything. So yeah, you'll have to wait till next week for that. And yeah, it's not a money grabbing thing. It's just, yeah. I hope everyone's had a lovely Christmas. I've been in bed for most of it because I've come down with the flu <laughs> since getting back. Um, apart from that, it's been lovely though, uh, spending time with the family. And yeah, looking forward to bringing you an exciting video next week and uh, with some news on what's happening. And a massive thanks to all those amazing people who went to my coffee and PayPal over the last uh, whoa, two weeks because uh, I've, uh, I didn't upload last week because it was pretty hectic. Oh no, I did, I did upload last week, the week before. Thank you very much.